yes, the Apostle Dorothy Hayes. Yeah! <laughs> Dorothy Hayes is the pastor at the New Life uh, Church right here in Newark, New Jersey. Position she's held for at least the last 13 years. During her secular life, uh, her old secular life, she was a elementary and middle school special needs teacher for right. 19 years in the East Orange Schools. Yeah. Currently, Reverend Hayes is uh, doing the last leg of her internship right here at the Humanity Baptist Church. Yes. She is providing an invaluable service to many of the ladies in this church and in this community. Yeah. And she's working with me, uh, doing pastoral care and counseling, and is doing an excellent job, as I said, yes. Yes, she is. Yes, yes. yes. So she has been uh, a much needed uh, servant in this, in this branch of Zion uh, this entire semester. We are hopeful and prayerful that uh, as she satisfies the requirements, she can receive her, her master's degree as she's finishing up. Amen. Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm sorry. We're a church in many places, so they said you need to be a here. So. You gave me my hands to reach out to man to show him your Cannot wipe away their tears. 
as we go into 2023, he's keeping us even when we're caught. Right. So he gave me the book of John to begin to study from. And my guide scripture is from the book of John, chapter 8. But I wanted to take you on a journey. He said to take you on a small, short journey. And I have a couple of reasons why I want to do this. So open up your books to St. John, right after the book of Luke. Because I want to highlight a couple of things he wants me to show you as the evidence of him keeping you. And God wants me to show you also that he's operating in his divinity, but also in his humanity as he keeps us. We have to know who the God we serve is. He's sovereign. He's holy. Yeah. He's righteous. Yeah. He's never ended. Yeah. He's powerful. Yeah. He also is a jealous guy. Oh, yeah. And he wants you to know that he's keeping you. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. In John chapter 1, I'm just going to highlight a couple of things. Most of you may know this. You may be familiar with this. It says, but the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Yeah. So in the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. Oh, yeah. He was in with God in the beginning, and through all him things were made. Without him, nothing was made that had been made. In him was life, and that life was the Lord. Okay. So we have to know that in first John, we basically want to meet his cousin. You meet his cousin John, who's John the Baptist, who came to prepare the way for Jesus to come. Amen. And so as we meet John the Baptist, he's talking about that he is not the Messiah, but he's here to prepare the way. And so he's letting us know that it's time for us to repent, and even still, he's keeping us. I want you to also know what the word keep. God wanted me to give you some sinners because he wants you to take notes. I'm a teacher as well as a preacher. So I want you to have some homework. I want you to, I'm going to go give you a synopsis of each little chapter, but I want you to go home and study this for yourself. To have charge of, to keep guard and watch over. The word keep also means watchman. I know we're in COVID, we're still in COVID, you still have a mask, and so don't get too close, but you can look at your name and say, he watches over me. He's still watching over me. He's still watching over me. It means to wait for, to observe. To retain and to treasure up. I hear you, Holy Spirit. To keep and to restrain. I had a conversation with my family. I had a, another loss in my family this week to keep oh. us in prayer. But I was talking to, uh, I don't even want to uh, highlight who it was in my family, but I was talking to someone in my family, and they said, I know God is calling me. I know God wants to use me. God is speaking to me. I said, so what do you want to do about it? She said, well, I'm still doing a lot of things on my own. And I know I'm doing some things that he doesn't want me to do, but, you know, as long as he doesn't see me, I need to preach this sermon to her and tell her that keep also means watchmen. So what I told her to do, I said, you don't think he sees everything you do? I said, I want you to take a mop and I want the old school mop, not the new swift and wet jets. Oh, yeah, yeah. The old school mop with yeah, the strings on the bottom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the ones that we use. And I said, I want you to get one of those mops. And I want you to turn it upside down. And I want you to put it in the corner because the mop is going to represent Jesus. You're going to see his hair flowing. So when you're in your room doing some things that you don't want to do, look at the mop. I hear you. I hear you. She said, I actually did what you told me to do. And I could. about Jesus Christ Get to don't change. Go down to John chapter two. 
Now in John chapter 2, most of you might be familiar with this. This is when he turns the water into wine. This was his first miracle. Amen. He was invited to a wedding with his disciples along with his mother. And they were having a great time. And his mother comes to him and says, son. She went to the service and says, whatever he tells you to do, I want you to do. All right. And Jesus does a miracle. He takes water. And, it's, and you need to know the miracle in this. The entire molecular structure changed into water. It's just not the cup. If anybody has ever tasted water, if you, you don't want to admit it, it's all right. You just look at me straight. You just blink your eye. You don't have to do not <laughs> You don't want anybody to know that you've ever had something to drink. But what he did was a miracle. This was the first miracle at the wedding. Yeah. And even at the wedding, when they ran out of what they thought they needed, he said, I'm keeping you. Yeah. Yeah. John chapter 2. So in here, we know about the wine. And then what happens is he goes into a church a few days later. Yeah. And he goes into this church and he sees them buying and selling and sheep and goats and all types of things going on. He sees an exchange of the coins and he says, what are you? In the church, now you have to understand this was happening during the time of the Passover, and the Pharisees and the Sadducees began to look at him and take notice. They did not do <laughs> Let's take a journey down to John chapter three. Now here we're going to meet a man named Nicodemus, and the reason I'm giving you a little highlight is I want it to get juicy for you, so when you go home, you're interested in reading the rest for yourself. Wow. When he meets Nicodemus, and Nicodemus was a Pharisee, he said, this looks like the Messiah, but he didn't come in the daytime. He went to sneak and meet him at night. Anybody ever sneak at night? Anybody ever do some things at night? You don't want people to know you're doing so you wait until night. Don't up, going outside. About nine, ten o'clock, you start doing what you do. He went out at night to go talk to Jesus because he didn't want everybody else to see what he was doing. I want to tell you that your relationship with God needs to be on display. The song said, "I'm available to you," and many times we hide behind church. We stay in the four walls, but God wants you to give your testimony. He wants you to tell how you got it over. He wants you to tell how you're still a one when everybody else is a tempest lender. And how did you do it when you're going through so much? He needs you to begin to share your life outside the church. But Nicodemus didn't want the backlash from the other Pharisees. He didn't know how they would feel if he knew that he was going to this society because people began to have a problem with Jesus because he was stirring things up. Amen. I believe that some people in here who are ready to stir, thing, stir some things up, whether it's in your family, whether it's at your job, begin to speak about Jesus and stir some things up. All right, all right. He came to him and he said, For no one could perform the signs you are doing if God were not with him. Jesus said, There We also know here 
we also know here that we want to go down to John chapter 4. All right. He's going to meet a woman. Oh, yeah. He's going to meet a woman at the well. Oh, yeah. And she's there getting some water. He sees her there. His disciples have gone into the city to get some food. And he's tired and he's thirsty. And Jesus said, Will you give me something to drink? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And her response is, You're a Jew. Mm -hmm. And I'm a Samaritan woman. Well, How can you ask me for a drink? But Jews do not associate with Samaritans. Well, There's some people that you didn't always get along with. Uh -huh. There's some people in your life that you'll be a little bit, you know, on the outs with. God said, who about to use you or raise you up to be the minister to that person? I want you to get into your, 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 your arsenal, get that compassion out. Because people who you thought weren't listening to you, people who you thought weren't watching you, people who you thought did not hear your testimony, those are going to be some of the same ones that he's going to call you to minister to. He says to her, if you knew the gift of God who it was that asked you for some drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you little water. Wow. He proceeds to tell her about the five husbands or the men that she had. He said, even the one you have now is not your husband. Oh, yeah. And she yes. said, all right, I bet you she wish she would have just gave him some water so he didn't have to talk. Sometimes God pulls our coattails and that she just obey and just did what he asked her to do. And I ain't got to expose all my business and tell her everything about me, but he kept it on the low because it was just her and him. And the Lord is dealing with me about some people are on the low with some stuff. And it's all right because God said, I'm keeping you, but I'm going to have some instructions for you before this day is over. So because of that, she said, I perceive that you are a prophet. And she said, I'm going to go in to tell everybody about you. So she began to go into town and tell everybody about them. And I thought this was so appropriate with the title of the sermon because even in that, he covered her and he kept her. Yeah, yeah. man. Yeah. John chapter 5, we're almost done. I'm almost at my guide. We're at the pool of Bethesda. This uh -huh. is a miracle. Oh, wow. This is where the blind and disabled used to go wow. and they would lay around the pool with the hope that the water would stir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And when the water would stir, you remember the story? Yeah. When the water would stir, they would get into the water and receive their healing. Wow. And there was a man there yeah, and he yeah. was there for 38 years. I believe it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he came and Jesus walked up to him and said, Do you want to get well? Wow. Sometimes we're in a situation, we give a lot of reasons and we give a lot of background information about what happened to us, who did what, what they did, what they said. My mother used to tell the story about bless her soul, but she was so traumatized with some things that happened. She would tell the story as if it just happened. Today, yeah. she would often use me to demonstrate, and my mother was physical. And I said, Mom, you don't have to use me as a rag on. No. She would say, This is what I did, and then I grabbed him like this, and I did all these type of things because the trauma was so real. But it got to a point, I said, Mom, you gotta learn how to forget. Yeah. Mom, you just gotta learn how to get over. You gotta get up, you gotta move forward, you gotta leave that behind. So he said, Do you really want to get well? Wow. Serve the invalid. Said, I have no one to help me into the pool when the water is stirred. While I'm trying to get in, someone else goes down ahead of me. And I thank God for in the 38 years that he was watching over this man, waiting for this opportunity right, to keep him. He said, yeah. Get up, yeah. pick up your mat, yeah. and walk. Right. Yeah. The man immediately got up. He was so excited. He went jumping around. Even the people who knew that he was an invalid for all this time, they were surprised that again, Jesus is on the scene. Yeah. He's causing some trouble with the Pharisees yeah. and the Sadducees. So now they're reporting back. But even with that man for 38 years, if you've been in a situation 20 years, oh, 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, he's still keeping you. Yeah. He still wants you to and He wants you to get up and move forward because he still has life in you and for you. Yeah. All right, man. Preach. I want you to understand in the same chapter, uh -huh. chapter 5, he's talking to his people, and I thought this was so profound. Mm -hmm. They began to question him because he was doing these miracles. You have to understand they're watching the water turn to wine, they're watching the woman who was uh, had several, several husbands. And he, don't you know people know your business, they know your business. Mm -hmm. So they're looking at her and saying, This is the same woman all the time, and now she's gonna turn into an evangelist and she don't tell everybody about Jesus. They're like, they have to be something about this man and how is he keeping it? He has to be God, but I'm still not sure. So in chapter five, 
Well, he begins to talk about who he was, and they begin to question him. And in verse 19, he says, truly, truly, I tell you, the son of God can do nothing by himself, because now they're accusing him of being a devil. You ever been so filled with the spirit that people mismanage you for witchcraft, you're actually from God? Amen. You ever been so filled with the spirit that you see things that others don't see? Oh. You hear things that others don't hear, and nobody believes you, so they think you're crazy? So they begin to call him. And said, that's how you're casting out demons and doing what you're doing. He said, I can only do what I've seen my father do. For whatever the father does, the son also does. Yes. The father loves the son and shows him all he does. And to your amazement, he will show you even greater works than these. I said, okay, God, you keep repeating yourself. How many of you know it's in Genesis, I want to say it's 43, that when he repeats himself, it's because not only is it going to happen, but it's going to happen soon. Yes. Right. Greater things shall we see. Jump down into John chapter 6. Right, the people have been following him. There's a great crowd of people, at least 5,000, because they only numbered the men. They didn't count the women and the children. And now the people are hungry and tired. And so he tells his disciples, feed the people. He said, we don't have enough to feed all these people. What, what do we have? And so he's keeping them because they all, they spot a little boy. He has a little fish sandwich. He had about five loaves and two fish. And he said, bring me the fish. Bring me the bread. So he takes this once again, operates in his divinity while he's in his humanity. And he turns the bread and the fish into enough fish. He blesses it and breaks it and he can feed plus 5,000 plus people. And he also had basketfuls left over. People are seeing what's going on. He says, even when you're hungry, even when you're tired, I'm keeping you. Go down to chapter 7. We on the tone. After this, Jesus went down and around Galilee. Because the people were now trying to kill him. Yeah. Do not let anybody kill your testimony. Do All not right. let anybody kill what God has already done for to you and me. Do not let any situation, any family member, any co worker, do not let anybody shut you up and kill the Spirit of God in you. Don't let your neighbor who's on your left and your right kill your testimony or kill your praise. Thank you, Jesus. They said to him, because they wanted him to be the superstar, they wanted to make him king. They didn't understand when he said that my kingdom was coming, that he talked about a different kingdom. Right? Well, yeah. Yeah. So his brothers even came up to him and said, why are you doing everything in secret? Why are you telling me I don't let anybody know what I'm doing? Because he would perform a miracle and say, hey, listen, don't say anything. Just go just go and praise God. And they would go and run and tell that. And he's like, run and tell that. <laughs> so now, brother said, well, anybody who wants to be a public figure should be doing this in the public. Yeah, that yeah. was not why he's here. It's not for, he didn't come to be this public figure. He came to die for us oh, and to yeah. keep us. Yeah. But we didn't want to be kept. Oh, yeah. Now go ahead and try eight. All right. I thought this was amazing because eight is the number of new beginnings. Yeah. John and eight, we meet a woman. Mm -hmm. She's caught in the act of adultery. Oh, yeah. Let's look at verse 2. But early the next morning, he was back at the temple teaching. Wow. A crowd soon gathered, and he sat down and taught them. Don't forget, this crowd is now accusing him, yeah. and they don't like him, and they're questioning him. And as he was speaking, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in the act oh, of adultery. Oh, She's oh, caught in the actual act. Oh, they put her in front of the crowd. Teacher, they said to Jesus, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. Well, the law of Moses says to stone her. Uh -huh. So, what do you say? What do you well, say? Go ahead, say it. They were asking him this because they wanted to trap him and to yeah. say something they could use against him. Oh, yeah. 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 One of the things you need to pay attention to is the fact that she was caught in the act uh -huh. means she had been doing it over and over well, and over again. They knew her routine. Right. This was not at night. All right. This was during the day. All right now. So when you know what somebody's doing something, you have, you have all these cell phones, you have to look out your window and see something, and you like to get that cell phone out and start looking like, oh, she looks happy. Let's take a picture. Oh, oh, oh. And you have to do that. I've done that. Open the blind, you meet people outside yelling and do something. You start recording. <laughs> she must have had a pattern and done this enough yeah. that they knew where she was. Yes. And they knew where she was going. Oh, yeah. 
The thing about this is that they knew she was in the act of adultery more than one time. But they let her stay in the act of adultery. The only reason they got her because they wanted to see what he was going to say about this. Because now, what does the law say? So they snatch her up, not the man. That's right. Snatch up the woman <laughs> and they bring her in front of Jesus. I can imagine she probably had half her clothes on. She might have had lingerie, lingerie, half in, half out. Okay? And they said, What do you say? High maintenance. All right. So Jesus stoops down and he begins to write in the dirt. Oh, yeah. And so said, God. I don't, you don't see what he wrote. So I just pondered and I prayed and said, God, why would he just stop teaching and get down and write in the dirt? Uh -huh. I said, all right. The Lord told me, look up the finger of God. Well, there are four times that theologians and researchers have found the finger of God phrased in the Bible. Three times in the Old Testament, two times in the New. The first time this is in Exodus, when the third plague was released, when Pharaoh would not let Moses and his people go. So he used Moses to release a plague, right? Yes. And so then Pharaoh called his magicians to do the same thing, right. and they couldn't replicate it. They said, okay. Pharaoh said, this must be the finger of God. The next time you see, it's also in Exodus. This is when the finger of God was the finger that wrote the Ten Commandments. Okay? Let me give you the scripture so you can look it up when you get home. So when they wrote the Ten Commandments, this is in Exodus 31 and 18, it wasn't, it wasn't Moses who wrote it, but the finger of God inscribed the commandments on the tablets. Alright? You'll see this retold also in Deuteronomy 9 and 10. They also talk about the finger of God in the New Testament. And this is when, after freeing a blind, mute, deep man from a demon, Jesus says to his critics, and I drive out demons by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come upon you. That's in Luke 11, 20. Yeah. So the kingdom of God is here, and he's still using his finger. Wow. So I said, okay, now what are you saying to me about the finger of God? So he began to write in the dust. And I said, why is he writing in the dust? He said, I told you in chapter 5 that I can only do what I see my father do. So I remember, because don't forget in chapter 1, that he was with God in the beginning. So he said, I can only do what I see my daddy do. My daddy used his finger. My daddy wrote in the dirt. He said, what are you talking about? He said, I'm playing in the dust because my daddy played in the dust. Can you remember Genesis when he created man? When he took the dust from the ground and he blew the breath? She's already born. God did that to form the first human. He said, yeah, but I'm here. So all you need is just a finger for me to keep you. So as he was in the dust, he said, I'm going to rewrite some things. My father wrote on the tablet of stone, but now I got to write on the tablet of your heart. The Bible says, well, write that word on my heart. And to remember it so you won't know sin against him. So he says, tie them to your fingers. Write them on the tablets of your heart. So he stooped down. So I said, okay, God, he was sitting in the sanctuary, and now he's in the ground playing in the dirt. He said, I already know how to do this because I did it before. I was with my father in sovereignty, but I had to come down from my divinity to humanity to keep the people of God. So while I'm sitting in the tabernacle teaching, let me stoop down again out of humanity, go back into divinity, use the finger of God to rewrite some things for this woman of God. Let me rewrite her path because I know how she's built, but let me write some things. Let me go to the dust from the foundation of which she's standing on, the same foundation from which she was created. Let me rewrite her path. Let me be what I said I was in her words, land upon her feet and a light upon her path. She's gotten off the straight and narrow path. Let me start to rewrite some things for her because I'm going to give her some instructions. Because in the Old Testament, they had to give an offering when they sinned. But now he came to do a new thing. Isaiah 43 and 19. Behold, I do a new thing. Now this brings forth. Don't you see it? Don't you recognize it? So I need to rewrite some things because, see, before when he had to give an offering, they would just give a sacrifice. All right, all right. Go right back to doing what they were 
They would give another sacrifice and go right back to doing what they were doing. And they would give another sacrifice. So what was once created to be a sweet stitch in his nostrils. You ever been drowned in the summertime and you know somebody's having a cookout and you can smell the meat. You smell the burning air out of the room. And you're like, who's cooking out? Where is the barbecue? That was what God intended when they gave the sacrifice of the animal on the altar. Because they were only to sacrifice one of the main times was when they sinned. And that sin sacrifice was saying, God, I'm sorry. Because they had to sacrifice out of their own, of their, their cattle. And these cattle were used for food and clothing. So when he would say, oh, wow, they're sacrificing precious cattle. They're, they're sorry. They have Yeah. And what once was a sweet smell yeah. in his nostrils yeah. became a stench. Yeah. Yeah. He got upset. He said, this is so, it's almost like I'm going to go to the club. Let me get my goat. Yeah. I'm going to go drop it like it's hot, hot, hot. Let me go get the book. And I'm going to go to this person's house and that person's house. At night, I know I'm sneaking creep. Let me go get some doves, two turtle doves, and a picture. And they would just say, here. Yeah. Yeah. So he said, I have to send the ultimate one. Yeah. I have to send my son. Yes. To help keep them. Yes. So now that the law was once on the tablet of stone, it's now on their heart. So now, before I give my sentence to this woman caught in the act of adultery, I have to rewrite some things. Right, so man. as I'm operating the supernatural, yes. they kept questioning him and said, What are you going to do? Uh-huh. So he stood up. And he said, Okay. <laughs> he says, Is there anybody here well, who has never sinned? My if there isn't, you cast the first stone. Oh and so, yeah. and everybody had to look within their dirty hearts. Uh, that same dirt uh-huh. that we were born from. Yeah. And they all yeah. dropped their rocks. Uh-huh. And one by one, well, began to exit stage left. Right. From the elements to the youngest. Yes, sir. And that was pointed out because for those who are the most religious to the least, they drop their stones. And so he approached the woman and he says, are your shoes still here? Well, she said, no, my Lord. She was caught in the act of adultery, but she knew who he was. She said, no, my Lord. They are not. He said, not do I All right, yeah. He said, now go all right, and yeah. sin no more. Right, yeah. And see, that's the part that we got to catch. We can't keep offering the sacrifice. We don't do that anymore. Yeah. But he said now, but he said I had to rewrite some things on her heart. I had to rewrite her direction, rewrite which way she was to go, rewrite some things about her, let her know she's beautifully and fearfully made, let her know this is not what I created her for, let her know that I want you to take a different path because I'm about to send you out. And I'm going to tell you, I forgave you, go. But sin no more. We are at the time that God, we understand that He keeps us. Yes. Even when we're caught. Anybody ever been caught in something? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Any, anybody ever been caught? And sometimes we don't get caught. We thank God for the grace. Because there were some things I didn't thank God I was not caught in it. But it had me caught up. Sometimes you get caught up in a situation that becomes a soul time, becomes all types of other things. You gotta ask God to help you get free. And once you get free, stay free. Because he's keeping you even though she was caught. So as he rewrote the direction for her life, I believe that's what he was supernaturally doing with the finger of God. He sent her out. He said, I know you sin. I know you're caught. I know they're going to talk about you. They probably still going to talk about you. Because you brought me in front of everybody. They know what I did. But the miracle was going to be, they waited. Yeah. And they watched, waiting for her to be stoned yeah. to death. Yeah. When you were stoned biblically, it was unto death. Oh, yeah. And I'm sure that when they saw her walk out of the temple, still alive. Uh, yeah. Is that something has changed. Yeah. So if you've been caught, if you're in still in something, yeah. I yeah. want you to know that God is keeping you. Oh, yeah. 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 One of the reasons he's keeping you it says in 2 Peter, I'm going to say 3.19, he says, I'm not slow in keeping my promises as some think. Because some people say, God, we coming back and taking so long. He said, I'm not slow in keeping my promises. He says, I'm taking my time.
Because I have a desire for all of you to repent. Yes. I don't want to come back until I have as many as I can have. Yeah. He says, so I'm not coming back because I'm, I'm not here because I'm slow. I'm here because of y'all slow. I'm waiting for y'all to get some things together before I crack the sky and come back and give the ultimate judgment. I'm keeping you until you can get yourself together.
like to encourage our guests, we will. Amen. And so let's encourage Apostle Hayes. Amen. Amen. Stand to your feet, if you will. Amen. 